Here we go. Do you see that? Yeah. Good. Um, all right. Wait, can you can you enable it? So I can do it too. Let me see here. I think you gotta click on participants and then give permissions. Uh, let's see. Colors, colors, colors. How's that? Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Juan, what is up, yo? Magna. It's recording oh now, so. How are you guys doing, dudes? God. Yes. Amazing. So, Juan, where are you now? Costa Rica. Oh, are you I... serious? That's a beautiful place, dude. I would it like to. So uh, healing to right now. It's Did you say healing? Probably, yeah, it's probably the most healing spot to be right now on the planet. Not because I'm here, but. <laughs> right, of course, <laughs> you're not biased by that, right? Yeah, I mean, like, they've had less than 20 deaths. The government has been really on top of everything. There's no panic shopping. There's an abundance of food. Where I'm living, I can just go and pick fruit every day. Oh, how long have you been there now? Since first week of March. Uh, and why did you pick that uh, spot? Or was it like very random? You just wanted to go somewhere that had like beach and nature? Oh no, it was super intentional. I About wanted to go- Costa Rica. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to go somewhere where I trusted the government, somewhere that they prioritize nature, mm. somewhere where there's fruit, where there's food growing on the land, there's an abundance, so people don't enter scarcity mode. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go, I wanted to be surrounded by nature. So there's no luck yeah. down there, huh? No what? No lockdown or anything, no curfew, whatever. No, yeah, yeah, no, they have. But it's, you know, totally. On a different level, totally I'm sure. Totally on a different level, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, for example, the beach is open every day from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., something like that. Wow. And um, so that way, basically, what's the concept? They don't want people to be driving from the major city to some beach to party they right. want people to use their local beach like if, if you live in a beach community go use it when you wake up and blah 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 you know make that as part of your daily therapy but right. don't be driving across the country to go to the beach because that's not the that's not what we're living now you know? mm, right so <clears throat> you know and, and they have their social distancing people wear masks to go to stores the mask started last week so just last week, huh? All right. Yeah. Damn. Because and and basically they've only had a spike. They had two deaths for I don't know until maybe like last month. I think last month a spike came in through people coming in to Costa Rica. Got it. Yeah. But it's so. it's not it's not one of those situations where you have like our idiot president who's sitting there saying don't uh, test and then you won't have any cases. <laughs> no, 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 Costa Rica's way, I'm gonna put stuff in while we're talking. Costa Rica's way more advanced. Like the president was saying, hey, no need to panic shop. We have enough food hmm. to last us for two years. Even if we couldn't import anything into the country, we have two years worth of food. So if we had to stay locked up for two years, We'll we can fine. handle it. Like there's, right. there's no need to go, which then means you go to the supermarket and there's none of that panic and right. scarcity. And you still find everything oh. that you want, right? Everything. What about what about the tourist thing? Are they allowed or are, are they in quarantine for 14 days before they could move around? There's no tourists coming in now. And basically I would say, I don't know, maybe like 90% of the tourists left because the first week of March, they closed all the tourist spots. <clears throat> so it wasn't a, if you're a tourist and you're here for tourism, 
you're going to be like, okay, I guess I'm going home, you know? And right. I remember I received an email from the U.S. government. This is your last chance to get out of Costa Rica. I'm like, and go where? <laughs> to you? Um, yeah, I'll pass. I'm going right. to miss, I'm gonna miss my last chance on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, so let's start officially. Uh, we, uh, we welcome you for the first Rajata podcast i say podcast because she thinks it's you gotta audio. stop calling it a podcast what do you call it call it a facebook live <laughs> i don't know uh, okay facebook live or whatever it is um <laughs> uh, magna gopal from new jersey who now lives in new jersey and Juan calderon who now resides in costa rica which we're excited to talk about as well so and and we're all jealous of oh, well, let's, of let's make that clear let's definitely make that jealous clear. of him being <laughs> So anyway, let's start with Magna. Magna, since the pandemic, what you've been doing? Um, not dancing. Well, with the exception of a couple of online classes, but yeah. I've actually gotten a lot more into fitness. Me too. Significantly more. Yep. But fitness, I mean, fitness has always been a priority in my life. I was injured for a long time, so I hadn't gotten into it since... Probably I'd taken a break from July until January. Then I got back into fitness and then the gyms closed. Like I was one month in the gym, getting that routine, getting that swing back, and then the gyms closed. And I was thinking, shit, I've been out of it for too long already. And I didn't want to, um, I didn't want this pandemic and the homestay to affect me physically. Because if you're fit, your immune system's kicking, you know, that it's easier for you to fight off any infection and, and just also just stay mentally sane. So I decided that I would do workouts at home. And initially I, I, I was going to do them all just live, you know, something to, to engage with people and get them to um, engage with me, but also a little bit more for my own accountability, just because I was like, if I don't say I'm going to be online every day at 10 a.m. doing a workout, I might not work out every day. Mm. And so it definitely helped me get um, get into a routine. And I did 60 days of that straight mm. every day, 10 a.m., no excuses. I showed up, created like some pretty good workout programs, like balanced workout programs. And then now, not at all what I expected, but I've been running monthly sessions with a private group of people doing fitness. So we do live sessions in a private group and they get like a fully balanced workout. It's a really nice community. That's my, uh, my QFIT crew. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. What, what do you do when, when you're a full-time artist like that and pandemics occur and gigs are canceled, as an artist with both of you, you guys have some safe money investment or whatever so that you don't panic and like, you know, <laughs> go into the emergency mode. Juan, you wanna answer that first? <clears throat> sure. I mean, I might wanna backtrack a little bit. Before yeah, just backtrack. That, yeah. Okay. yeah. <clears throat> so the way I see it, there's two things going on, COVID-19 mm -hmm. and the anti-racist movement. Yeah. Both of these things are definitely impacting, affecting our lives and is something that we must act on and find a way. So that's the first thing that I see. The second thing is the preparation of how do you deal with that? Sure, some people may have prepared in the past and therefore their preparation will allow them to navigate the present. And if you did not prepare in the past, there's no shame in that. You can prepare in the present. So wherever you are at, don't feel like you missed the boat. Don't feel like you're in a bad place. If you have, if you have savings and you had money put away and now you're using that to cope in the middle of this status. Yeah. Great. If you don't have savings and you are finding new ways to cope right now in the middle, that's cool too. So wherever you are, feel comfortable being there and taking it from there. How do I personally prepare? 
And it's something that I would invite anybody to prepare for their present and their future. I don't rely on any one thing, whatever the one thing is. <clears throat> so, so let's say in this case, the word business is coming up. If I rely on one source of income, and this is my only business, for example, I think in your question, you said something like, you as artist, how do you deal with this time? And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm not an artist. Art is something that I do, not something I am. I am something else. And this other thing that I am allows me to choose multiple avenues of revenue, allows me to choose multiple ways to express myself, allows me to choose multiple ways to make money. Yeah. So having that mindset already sets me up in a place that I don't ever feel stuck, that I don't ever feel limited. I'm not limited. I am. I have abundance possibilities at my hands, in my reach. The moment that I think, oh, this is who I am. I am this. This is the only thing I am. Well, if the only thing that you are is something that you cannot do right now, then do you cease to exist? So I now, you know, this might be getting into philosophical avenues, but basically, I don't cease to exist. So therefore, I am not a dancer. I am not a dance teacher. I am not a performer because I'm not doing that today and I am still here. So what am I? You know, and we could go down a rabbit hole. So I'll pause there. And, and maybe that is a question that one needs to get to. Like, who am I? What am I here to do? What is my purpose? How do I want to play in this thing we call planet Earth? Yeah. How do I want to express myself? How do I want to live? <clears throat> Having this mindset already sets you up to not feel powerless because this mindset is powerful. So that's my answer. So, so, in other words, so in other words, because of that mindset that you have, whatever mm -hmm. happens at that moment, whether it's an emergency or whatever, you are mm -hmm. basically flexible. You adapt to it. Well, yes. I've always said mindset is everything. Um, and I always go back to Bruce Lee's saying yeah. like, be like water, my friend, and just right. flow, you know? Um, it really depends on your rigidity. Like if you feel like you're limited, you're limited. If you feel like there are many possibilities open to you, your mind will be able to process those opportunities and then take advantage of them. And I think, at least for myself, um, maybe I'm not with fingers in tons and tons of uh, baskets, but given my entire life experience and all the things that I've been through, I've always been resilient enough to adapt to a new situation, take advantage of it, and then thrive in that new environment, in that new situation. I had that issue, same thing, uh, when I was dancing and I got injured. All of a sudden, I couldn't mm. dance, I couldn't teach, I couldn't perform, I, I couldn't do any of the things that I thought my identity was based on initially, mm. you know? And then I figured out other ways to, to still be present, to still be able to offer what I feel is a service, you know, that I want to give to other people. And there are so many ways to do that. So I completely agree with you, Juan, so that, that open mindset, that Bruce Lee yeah. flow structure mm -hmm. allows you to to approach things differently and and you're right it doesn't matter where you were before you're here now so just mm -hmm. go forward from here don't regret what you didn't do or what you have done just acknowledge where you are and then try and work forward from that mm. yeah, yeah. That's, a quick uh, question yeah just checking because a friend just sent me a message is the facebook live running right now no, Are I, we... I, I couldn't do it so what i'm gonna do is i'm, I'm gonna uh, post it later on maybe edit it or whatever uh both of you can do that as well because you're recording it yourself so cool. which is a good thing yeah the reason my my thing here is that i'm not sure too sure about the live yet what i'm trying to build is my subscribers in youtube i am much yes. more into the youtube uh than anything and so that's what i'm gonna do 
I mean, have you heard of Joe Rogan? Yes. <laughs> Podcast? Are you kidding yes. me? That's $100 million for Spotify. Are you serious? <laughs> so, All right. Um, anyways, All right. Uh, I've, uh, that was a panic for me, guys, because, you know, I'm a promoter. I do this full time. I'm also a teacher. I got regular gigs. So all the income that are coming are from that business alone. So I have six festivals. <laughs> and then I have a monthly social. Then I have a weekly class. When that was locked down, I was in panic mode, dude. Because prior to that, uh, my mom died and the funeral cost a lot of money. Uh, and then I lost money in one festival. When you're talking about losing money in one festival, we're talking thousands of dollars. So I was in panic. I took jobs that I was not used to doing because I left the corporate sector in 2006. I became full-time. Never looked back because I've always said, look, even if the economy is doing so bad, Dancing is an addiction. Nobody will ever, that, that will never happen. It will never stop, but I was wrong. <laughs> and so I work as a warehouse person. Uh, I work in Amazon and all of that stuff. And you're talking about $15 an hour, but I had to do it. Once I did it, I have forgotten how valuable and how precious it is for certain people to work that hard 10 hours straight nonstop, and you're doing warehouse job they do this every day and so when i realized that my god i i forgot the value of money and how people work so hard to earn it you gotta realize as an artist i'm used to making from 1500 to 2000 every weekend per gig. Let's just say that, like, think of that. If you have done that since 2006 and then suddenly stop and then you earn money from a 10 hour straight hard work to $15 an hour. Well, see, this is uh, one thing in terms of the different types of jobs that we can have and the different types of ways that we can make ends meet. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I think puts a lot of people in panic is just their ego that blocks them. Like if you need to make money and you need to wait tables, wait tables, yeah. you know, like what's wrong with that. Right. Yeah. People just feel like after, after having a certain level of income or a certain stature in, or recognition <clears throat> in a certain field, like dance as an artist, yeah. um, there's almost this like, Oh, I could never do that kind of job. Like that's below me. Nothing's below you. And mm. also every part of this machine is required. This For everything to function, you need not only your artists, but you also need your tech people. You also need your janitors. You also need the cooks. You need everybody, you know? Yeah. And when you, when you start to not look at a job as uh, higher or lower, but as contributing value to a process, you know, to, to an end, I think you can find more pride in whatever you do. And I, and, and I think that's important because I, I definitely know a lot of people who are like, oh, well, I'm not going to do that job after I've been doing this for that long. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. Why? Who cares? You, you need to yeah. make ends meet. Do what you need to do. Figure and then continue to figure it out. Just because you're working a job that's not um, able to completely maximize your potential doesn't mean you can't still train that potential doesn't mean right. you still can't be looking for other opportunities it's just you're doing what you need to do to make ends meet yeah. like get 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 over that uh, egotistical hump i mean you know what i used to do before dancing right i used to be I, a, I used to be a counselor i counseled battered women oh wow i didn't yeah. know that yeah that's what i used to do first year of my practice i counseled disturbed children i couldn't take that I took that home. It was not good. And then I thought, like, maybe it'd be a great idea if a male figure can counsel battered women. And it worked for seven years. And then I left that and did dancing. Can you believe it? <laughs> so now I can't go back to it. I want to go back to it. But you're going to have to go back to square one. You're going to have to get relicensed. You have to do testing and, and all that kinds of good stuff. But I don't know. Oh, I don't know. 
but I'm doing okay. Um, this physical fitness thing is really helping me. I'll be turning 55 in the next few weeks. Damn. I, I, wanna, I wanna be in the base shape of my life, I tell you. I've been weightlifting, not necessarily like fitness. This, I'll probably mm. have a heart attack doing that, but I, but I lift weights uh, every day except Sunday uh, and mm. doing one body part. And they said that you cannot build muscles after 40. I wanna prove them wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's, what's, that's what's going on. Uh, Juan, are you into this? Because you're in Costa Rica. So when you're in Costa Rica and you're staying in one of this nature stuff, what's the most beautiful thing you've seen so far? Wow. How long, how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> Take me for a ride, yeah. man. Just I'm, give I'm, give I'm, us I'm a jealous. teaser. Yeah, give us a teaser. All right. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to tie in the teaser to a life lesson that applies to today's program. Yeah. So interesting, you were talking about working out, right? And being in the best shape of your life. <clears throat> That's what I'm doing. I'm working on my mind, my mindset, my neuroplasticity, growing my brain and its connections to different things. I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm evolving. This working out that I'm doing it's intentional too. So many times I'll have someone say, Juan, you're so lucky to be in Costa Rica. I'm like, I'm not lucky. This was intentional. This was right. a choice. Juan, you're so lucky to dance for a living. I am not lucky. That was a choice, intentional. Oh, Juan, you're so lucky to be in Australia when I was in Australia. Um, there, there was a flight and I booked it that, that had nothing to do with luck. <clears throat> so what is this concept? So there are mindsets. One of them is the scarcity mindset, the limiting language mindset. What is this mindset? What does it mean? Scarcity. So scarcity, to think that there's not enough. So let's talk about food and how I'm experiencing food right now. I used to not eat fruits and vegetables. And we could do a whole hour on that, but I'll keep it short. <clears throat> I was traumatized. I choked on a fruit when I was seven years old. And for 37 years, I ate zero fruits and vegetables. I cure this trauma and now I am living among food. I am literally in a place where food is growing around me. Just and, it. <clears throat> yeah, and the landlord of the land that I'm on <clears throat> is a shaman, <laughs> which just sounds so much fun to say, I'm living with a shaman. So <laughs> the shaman, <clears throat> and what is a shaman? A guru. What is a guru, a teacher? So let's, let's make it simple for those that the word shaman might scare. Yeah. So I'm living with a teacher. And this teacher takes me on a walk around the land and shows me this is how this fruit grows. And I'm like, what? And then this is the life cycle of this fruit. And example, inside a papaya, there's over 100 seeds each one of these seeds can grow another papaya tree. Like how much abundance, abundance is there <laughs> in living among food? And you know, then I think about United States, for example, <clears throat> which I've lived most of my life, and we grow lawns and we wanna mow the lawn and have this green grass. What if we lived? among food why do we live around food we wouldn't have the scarcity mindset that makes us go to the supermarket and fight people for food and think oh we don't have enough and i have to stock up food um the shaman the teacher that i live with just takes a walk every day across the land and picks the fruit the fruit that is ready picks the vegetables that are ready and that's today's meal and that's tomorrow's meal he collects bananas from his land and he has like a little stock of I had a red banana, a regular wait, 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 banana. Wait, a red banana? How does that yeah, taste like? <clears throat> Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> does it taste like a banana? <laughs> yes, yes, okay. yes. And, and speaking of taste of bananas, I had a banana that tasted like a marshmallow. Are you a serious? A marshmallow, yes. 
he, I also tasted a banana that tasted like an apple. I know it sounds weird, but there are so many different tasting bananas and the way they look is so different too. Any case, so this concept of living in abundance, we could start with food. If I grew my own food, I wouldn't feel the scarcity. My yeah. teacher says, hey, if every supermarket on the planet closed, I can live here for years. Yeah. And then he tells me the life cycle of his food and which trees bear fruit on which days. And some fruits take a whole year to, some fruits take a whole year to come out, but some fruits like bananas are coming out all year around. So he, he understands, he has learned the cycle of the fruit and the vegetables and what he's growing. So he, he's not scared about food running out. The limited mindset, the scarcity mindset, the I can't mindset leads you to fear. Right. And basically, that's, that's the problem when you the, enter the state of fear. Yeah, please. Go and, ahead. And, it's, and it's true, too. The problem with fear and that scarcity mindset is that people hoard as a result. And then you don't allow um, what nature can provide to you to even go through its cycle, which it's going Oh, it's not like because that tree isn't producing fruit right now. It does not mean it won't when its cycle resumes, you know? So yeah, that, but it's that fear. It's like, oh my God, I need everything right now. Like, what am I going to do if I don't have it? And what about next week? Just like, let that time come, let the fruit provide for you. But in the U.S., everything is, is not like that. Nope. Um, everyone here is, uh, the other issue, I think, at least um, with our situation especially in the U S yeah. is like this very individualistic mentality. Um, it's never mm. been about community. It's always been about me mm. and uh, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to make sure I'm taken care of and my family's taken care of. And the rest of you can go to hell pretty much yep. like, I, and you can see that just in the way education is priced. Healthcare is priced. People are taxed. You know, those kind of things um, show you what kind of mentality dominates a country. Mm. And me coming from Canada, because I'm, I'm Canadian, yeah. I'm Canadian and American, proudly Canadian though. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> Probably Canadian now. <laughs> always proudly Canadian, always proudly Canadian. But yeah, coming from Canada and having an education um, at one of the best universities over there, doing an undergrad for 20 grand, uh, 20 grand loan, which covered my tuition plus all my books and supplies and everything. You know, and then coming here and listening to people talk about their undergrad degree costing them hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yep. I'm like, what? You'll be paying that? And God forbid you don't get a job that is commensurate with the kind of expenses you have. You're just right. going to take forever to pay it off. And that's your undergrad degree. That's even kindergarten people's, uh, the cost is so crazy. So yeah. I think that's the, the first problem is just a lack of community. And when you go to places, mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't been to Costa Rica yet, but, you know, anytime I've gone to um, other countries, especially a lot of countries that have beautiful, um, rich nature, I find that there's a, a community there as well, because people understand that it, you, one person can't tend to everything. You need a, a community to tend to everything so that everyone in that community can then reap the rewards of their efforts. Mm, yep. And so that um, desire to help to make sure that you can also eat so I can also eat type of thing, yep. mm. that mentality doesn't exist here. And that's mm. unfortunate. Uh, I think this country could have been much, much greater if, uh, if it exercised some sense of community and care mm. for your neighbor. Juan, going back to what you've been learning from this guru that you have my god mm. that's that is some learning there i mean you could even start a podcast in that <laughs> <laughs> nobody else is doing that as far as the philosophy of look you know you don't need to buy anything just mm. do this in your mm. backyard i'll show you how i'll just go oh my god that's yeah Juan. that's a lot of good life lessons there, brother. but teach me teach me what i can make out of something like a pot that size that's about as large as i can get <laughs> <laughs> wait bring bring up your hands a little bit so i can see it how how big is the pot the pot's very tiny you notice my hands are massive yeah that's <laughs> tiny, that's <laughs> tiny. <laughs> no i'm sorry right. that's really far no that's a big pot, that's a big pot. <laughs> <laughs> all right so well I learned to make banana bread the other day. 
Research the all the time? Yeah, I, I just learned the other day. And um, it was, was my much, to make? much easier than I would have ever imagined. And I learned to make ice cream from fruits. Yeah, and, I love ice cream, ice cream. I mean, and this is the whole concept of abundance, right? Yeah. So there's an abundance of bananas. So there's too many. So besides, as you, so as Magna mentioned, the U.S. mentality, like I'm looking out for self. Yeah. So here, my teacher, when he has an abundance of fruits, he gives to his neighbors. Nice. So for example, there's this fruit called jackfruit. Oh, I love jackfruit. Oh, I grew up with that in India. Humongous. I love I jackfruit. I never knew it was so big. And um, when he gets one, he shares it with the neighbors. So that's yeah. like, first of all, so beautiful and magical. He, and also, for example, let's go back to the bananas. Once they have passed their shelf life, he then freezes them and uses mm -hmm. them for other things. Example, yep. ice cream, which is like... <laughs> So now I'm using bananas to make a natural ice cream. And I'm awesome. like, yeah. wow, I'm, I'm, I'm eating fruits. And my banana bread was made with, oh, that's the other thing. I'm living a all plant life, let's call it diet. Nice. Um, so I'm, but it's not, not a diet, it's the wrong word. But I'm, I'm eating lifestyle. all plant, yeah. I, I'm, I'm eating a vegan lifestyle. How does I'm that living a vegan How does that affect what's the difference between that when you were eating uh let's just say mm. like a regular person <laughs> I don't know. when you were eating that nat naturally when you were eating when you were eating like me Yeah <laughs> me too <laughs> What's the I'm energy so level what's the benefit All right I'm so glad you put it that way So this mindset that we're working on this exercising of my muscles of my brain when you say the words when you're eating like a regular person what happens in my brain it says oh actually eating processed food is irregular right eating food with preservatives is irregular living off the land eating what's in season eating what is growing is actually regular and um, so that's part of the brainwashing of the scarcity mindset. Yes, yes. It's part of the brainwashing that we're living. So <clears throat> what can be more regular than growing your own food, having an abundance of it, and eating that every day? So how do I feel? I feel amazing. And interestingly enough, I felt amazing before too. Why? Because mindset. So whatever my daily intake of food was when I was a carnivore, which is just you know three months ago, or now that I'm eating all plant-based, my mindset has not changed. Um, do I feel a difference in energy? I feel a difference in energy because I'm also doing Qigong. So oh, wow. what is Qigong? So yeah, my teacher. That's a breathing, breathing exercise, internal <clears throat> martial arts, or what we call it. Yeah, so there's movement, there's breathing. Yeah. And there's feeling the energy that we all possess, that we live, the energy of the universe, the energy all around us. Any case, so back to the question and the community and the abundance. So that scarcity mindset, as Magna mentioned, mm -hmm. when we are looking out for self, then there's not enough. Yeah. In, in, the, in the mindset of abundance, I have so much, I can share it with my neighbor. Right. Also, this abundance is linked to another mindset of gratitude. And I like to spell that with a small G, a small R, and a capital attitude. So it's the attitude of gratitude. And right. example, before we eat a meal, we sing a song. And the song is, gracias por la comida, gracias por la comida, nos gusta, nos sana, nos da felicidad. Thank you for the food, thank you for the food. We like it, it heals us, it brings us happiness. Like I, I had never sang before eating, and now I'm in ceremony. And what is ceremony? Doing something with intention. Mm -hmm. And even starting a meal with an intention of gratitude. Wow. And it's to, so talking about exercising the muscles of my brain, yeah. Yeah. experiencing a community of people who sing to thank food 
for healing us. Right. Wow. That's beautiful. How did yeah. you and see how, and I, and I also feel like like those kind of those kind of things require that uh, open mind to explore. You know, yeah. again, open going mind, back yeah. to fear. Yeah, going back to fear of saying I've grown up in a city all my life. How would I ever survive in a place like Costa Rica? You know, yeah. there, there's that fear that a lot of people have to to not getting out. Even for me, I I was just thinking throughout this whole pandemic, I was like, man, I wish I was on an island somewhere living off the land right now because I don't need the people as much as I want. I would like ocean. I would love um, an open body of water and just be <clears throat> around nature, even though that's not how I've grown up. You know, and someone was asking me that too. They said, well, how would you survive? I'm like, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I mean, I think we're that adaptable that if you're stuck on an island, if you're stuck anywhere, if you went from an island to a city, you will figure it out. You will figure it out. You just got to trust that your survival instinct is strong enough to make do with what you've got around you. Yep. Um, but yeah, 100%. One. I, I kind of wished I was in Costa Rica right now, though. Like, I, 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 I invite you both come to Costa Rica <laughs> when we're when I'm, we're allowed to travel I'll be there man I, I've been wanting to same go to Costa Rica actually you know I really now you really entice me with this different types of fruits <laughs> really dude are you serious you know a banana <laughs> that tastes like a marshmallow are you kidding me <laughs> you exactly. know how did you end up there how did you meet this person all right, that's a, that's a great question. And I'll tie it into a lesson of the talk we're talking. Mm. So Magna mentioned, for example, I want to be at the ocean. I want to be on an island. <clears throat> so I have chosen to live intentionally. And, you know, before I say this next part, I want to read you something that will help me express authentically. <clears throat> This thing is called, this is called spiritual bypassing. And I don't want to do that. So by me reading the definition of spiritual bypassing, it allows me to be in touch with my authentic expression. Yeah. What is spiritual by bypassing? A tendency to use spiritual ideas and practices to sidestep or avoid facing unresolved emotional issues, psychological wounds, and unfinished developmental tasks. What does that mean to me? So as I am going through my process of my mind, of my mindset, I don't want anybody to ever feel like I'm judging theirs and, or that I don't think theirs is important. Actually, theirs and mine are the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have, we are all in this journey of growing and evolving and this learning. It, it's, it's something we all live. You can't escape it. <clears throat> so just because today I am here doesn't mean I wasn't there yesterday and that I am still also experiencing growth every day. I mean, I experienced growth just now a few minutes ago. Mm. So I want to keep clear on this concept that I am growing every day and wherever someone that's listening to our talk is that they don't feel judged or that they don't feel like they're in the wrong place. Right. Wherever you are is where you are and we are all growing. And that's the beauty. Like you can grow right now. So that being said, how did I end up here? <clears throat> okay. Living intentional. The, there was a day, it was like March 9th or something like that. It was first week of March. I was coming from Tennessee to Newark, New Jersey. And that was my flight that was purchased previously before stuff got a little, before the stuff hit the fan. Crazy, yeah. <clears throat> so that was my schedule, you know, and I had just finished teaching in Dallas and then I was teaching in Tennessee and now I was about to head back to New Jersey to see my family. Yeah. I'm on the plane and I'm thinking, I don't, I don't want to go to New Jersey. I don't want to make my parents sick. I'm on a flight right now. I'm among people. I have been in airports. Before those flights, I was in Asia. So like you just backtrack a couple of months. Yeah. I, in New Year's Eve, I was in Thailand. And then after Thailand, I was in Singapore. And in Singapore, I was in Kuala Lumpur. And I'm like, man, if you calculate from January to March, I've been through Asia and then multiple cities in the US and multiple airports. And I'm like, 
what if I'm sick? I, I don't know. And, you know, mm. this is before testing. And I'm like, what if I, my parents are older, of course, obviously, they're my parents. So um, <clears throat> they're more sensitive and they're and more at risk, right? So I said, I don't want to go to New Jersey. And then this happened in my brain. Boom. It was like, hit me in the face. Magna also brought up fear and how this concept of looking out for self creates this fear in yeah. us. And the scarcity also creates this fear. I was about to make a decision based on fear. Oh. I don't want to go to New Jersey because I'm afraid. What was I doing? I was Googling what cities in the U.S. should I go to? And I remember at that time, I think it was Nebraska and Virgi West Virginia, I think. For some reason, those two seem to be in the back of my memory yeah. as the two places with the least amount of cases in, the, uh, in that daily oh, I see. Google. Okay. <laughs> back, and back, I was then, like, back then in March. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get a fight to these places. And then I was like, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm acting on fear. This is not who I am. I want to be intentional. I want to choose on love. So then I said, where would I love to be right now? Right. And it was clear <clears throat> as day, Costa Rica is where I would love to be. Jeez. So then I was at the airport in Newark. I had just landed, about to go visit my parents. And I went to look at flights. And in 15 minutes, there was a flight to Costa Rica. I was like, I went to the counter and I did the thing and I'm on that flight. Living That's dope. Huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Choosing out of love instead of fear. Mm -hmm. Now, there's one last part to this story that I like to share, and which is this. I arrived in Costa Rica and I was yeah. thinking, what do I want to do here? What, <laughs> what do I want to experience? And this is what I said to myself. And I did a Facebook post about this back in March. Yeah. I said, <clears throat> I don't want to be in isolation. I mm. want to be isolation. And what is this cation? Like vacation. But see, I don't do vacation like, like I did in college, right? Like spring break vacation and wild parties. That's not the type of vacation that resonates with me. The type of vacation that resonates with me is a retreat. What yeah. is a retreat? It's a place you go for personal development and growth. And I said, I'm going to be in Costa Rica for personal development and growth. And I said, okay, I'm doing this. This is my retreat. And it started as a thought in my brain. And this is how intentionality works. It was just a thought that I shared with some of my friends who thought it was funny. Like, yeah, Juan's living a retreat. Got it. But today, today, I'm in an actual retreat. <clears throat> my teacher is hosting seven other people, six people, he's the seventh, six people in a retreat where every day we learn Tai Chi and meditation and Kundalini and we're learning about food and we're, we just had a cacao ceremony and we're, we're learning and growing and learning ancient arts that have been around for ages and yeah. songs that are about <clears throat> healing and the medicine of the food that grows around us. How did I end up in a retreat in Costa Rica? Well, it started with being at the Newark airport and having fear, love, and choosing love. And choosing this love and then the intentionality of how do I want to spend this time? I want to grow. And now I'm at a retreat. Like who, who would have ever imagined I would be at a retreat? Besides this retreat, I hosted two online retreats that I was the host, just like the retreats that I was hosting in person. Yeah. dance nature life i hosted two of those why because i was like well i can't host an in-person retreat right now but i am in costa rica maybe i bring the people here through the computer mm. so that is my story of what's been going on so you're pretty much you pretty much ask yourself what do i want what do i want in my life right now and with the answer to that question you end up to where you are now well, yes. I feel like with the answer to that question, I think there are a lot of people who ask that question and 
don't necessarily answer it honestly. True. There, then there are people who ask that question, answer it honestly, but take no action. Oh, I think yes. Where, where you are, Juan, is exactly, you know, you asked the question, you identified the fear. Because I think with every question, there's, there's always uh, your answer could be pushed by many factors in your life, you know, whatever is most pressing mm -hmm. at the time. And you took, you, an you answered it honestly, you got to some place and then you, you acted, you know, and that's really what it comes down to is taking action. Cause we all want lots of things, you know, and we might even be able to challenge all of those other obstacles mentally, but it's whether we actually take that step. Yeah. And the, the great thing about that is you didn't ask or you didn't even analyze, well, what if this happens? What if this, you, you didn't put fear in that thought because all those what ifs are really fear after but you know what, what you want. But what ifs can go fear or love? What if can be a positive thing too? I don't think Could what be. ifs are necessarily bad. I think a what if is just a hypothetical and a hypothetical is neutral. <clears throat> it's neither yeah. negative nor positive, you know, because well, you could sit there and be like, what if I go there and fall in love and meet the love of my life? Yeah, that's positive. Right? Well, that's a positive thing. What yeah, I'm impressed so. with this decision is that after that, he experienced growth and, growth, and then after, after he experienced growth, all of these things are opening up for him, which is really cool. It's like, it's pretty amazing. It just, it's just falling into place. Don't you agree, Juan? I mean, that's what I, that's what I gather and what uh, your testimony is. I, I have one more point to make, which I also think is uh, really important. In addition to fear, we also have a lot of attachment. And that's the other thing I think that prohibits or prevents us from taking action a lot of times. You know, I'll admit myself that, yeah, I'm attached to some of the luxuries of a life here in New Jersey. You know, I'm attached to not having to go and uh, weed through we like the grasses to go and find the fruit that I want or being attacked by bugs in the, the woods. I'm, I am attached to that convenience. Yeah. The question is, could I be placed in another place and adapt quickly? Yeah, I 100% believe I can. I've never ever thought um, that, I've never felt limited you know, yeah. by my abilities. It's just like Juan has taken this intentional choice to go to Costa Rica and, and find his, his way of um, having this retreat for this growth and development. I have made the intentional choice of staying here yeah. and growing here and finding Making different ways that I can now take my isolation in my home and make it an ISO vocation. So not <laughs> a vacation, that. but a vocation. <laughs> 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 We're learning something here. <laughs> so, okay, wow. we got about, we got about, uh, about 20 minutes because it's been two hours. The great thing about this chat like this, when there's one plan, but you don't really go to script. I love this type of, you know, uh, chat because you can get into a lot of things. But in your years of dancing, what is the most important lesson you learn? Looking oh, back at it now. <clears throat> Human connection is mm -hmm. one of the most important things for me. However, the first connection needs to be with myself. And I realized that I can always, like, I love people. I'm, I am an extrovert in many ways. I am a social, I'm a social being, but I've also been totally fine at home. You know, for these months, I'm like, ah, maybe I don't like people that much. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but I realized that mm. there was this joy that I felt being around people. But when I didn't feel whole, there was nothing I could give. As much as I wanted to, I could never give that much. And so dance, what dance has taught me is to find that authenticity of expression and communication with myself first so that I can then give it to other people. And then like Juan was talking about with the, the land, you know, and the abundance, like when you have so much to give, you help everybody, yeah. right? Everyone grows with you. Everyone is thriving. And then in return, because you are leading with this example of, um, gratitude, of um, generosity, of appreciation, 
when you lead with that example, those same people that follow you and who have now had a chance to benefit from those qualities of yours, give it back to you. And it just keeps flowing and it keeps growing and you build a beautiful community and you build beautiful connections. And I'm so thankful for what dance has allowed me to experience in myself because of these amazing relationships and connections I've built over the years. And, uh, you know, two of those are right here in front of me on the screen. You know, I would have not met you guys and I would have not had the connection I had with you had I not had the connection with myself first and then shared it. You know what I'll mm. never forget that you've done for me, Magna, when we first met? You freaking wrestle me, dude. You're f a strong woman. You're a strong woman. There was a, there was a surprise thing at my festival where I was supposed to get out of bed or something, and I wouldn't, and all of these people around me, <clears throat> and Magna had the courage to wrestle me out of the bed like this. Like, I was trying to wrestle back. It's like, what the hell? This woman is strong. <laughs> I'll never forget that. But <laughs> anyway, Juan? <clears throat> well, before I answer, I wanted to ask Magna a question. And thank you for sharing your genius. And yeah. I'm so inspired by the words you've shared and isovocation. I want to hear a little bit more about that. I love that I shit. I see <laughs> how it ties to everything. And wow, please. So vacation. Well, I, I, I was inspired by your, by your ISO vacation. Yes. So, <laughs> well, vocation is a, is a work, right? It's your, your job, your purpose, your life's purpose. And I've mm -hmm. started to look at this isolation as a purpose. Like, this is where I'm going to find my new purpose. You know, this is where I'm going to pivot. Mm -hmm where I can't do the dance stuff, that's fine. You know, I'll still do it just because I know there are people out there who want it and I have the ability to provide something to them. So I'm gonna do that because I love this. It's a, it's a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. But there's so many other avenues that I can pursue that will still fulfill my desire to serve. Cause that's like, for me, that's a big thing. I wanna always do something that helps other people grow. And so this, be, this isolation became a nice vocation. It's of awesome. finding my own purpose, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> I am so inspired by that. Thank you. We had mm. a nice little wordplay there. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Isolation, I iso love... vacation, iso vocation. <laughs> Boom. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. All right. <clears throat> so here are my thoughts on this. Oh, and I'm going to tie in that iso vocation <laughs> to this. So... The question was, what have I learned from dance? Well, the first thing that I learned from dance is that dance is not separate from life. So sometimes people say, oh, that dance lesson applies to life. And I'm like, of course it applies to life. Like dance is part of life. So if, if there was an umbrella that was life, dance is under that umbrella why would we think that a lesson that applies to dance does not apply to life? Example, Magna mentioned connection first mm. to self mm. and then to others. Reminds me of being on a plane and hearing the flight announcement <clears throat> say something along the lines of, in case of loss of cabin pressure, mm. mass will drop down from the ceiling please put your mask on first before helping others. Right. And I was thinking, children will die. What do you mean? Like, you have to help the babies first. Like, you got to put the mask on the baby. And then I realized, oh, wait a second. Right. If you put the mask on the baby and you pass out because you're not getting oxygen, then you both die. Yep. Oh, self-love first. Fill my cup. And then I could fill everybody else's cup. Yeah. I can't fill other people's cup with an empty cup. So this concept to me is dance and life. So where did the lesson come from? Sometimes my friends and my students will say that dance lesson was a life lesson. I'm like, no, 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 no. That dance, that life lesson is also a dance lesson. Dance lesson, exactly. Life lesson life lesson applies to everything that we do here. Yep. So I don't see them separate. I see them as one. So now 
how do we tie this to this location fest and people sometimes i use the word manifest and people think what is that is that magic okay let's use a different word goal achievement science so you have goal achievement science manifestation same thing okay what is the goal achievement science to put a short summarize one little thing all right goal achievement science i write it down i break it down and then i get down what do i get down to business whatever the business is that i broke down that i wrote down so this iso vocation the theme of this talk is creative ways to deal with this time and business and whatnot so i write down what is my goal in this case specifically let's talk about business you know we could talk about food we could talk about health we could talk about personal development talk about business i write down what is my goal with the business i then break down those goals how do i break it down i make them smaller it could be broken down with time it could be broken down with quantity it could be broken down any way that you can visualize it to make the big goal small little goals after i break it down i get down to business i get down to doing the thing magna mentioned something about sometimes people answer the question honestly but they don't get to action so that, that's the action so the third step get down is the action so first you visualize your goal and visualizing is powerful but i also like to write it down because i want to see it i want to look at it i want to then break it down into little steps and then action so that is how i visualize getting to the next step in this time in regard to business and whatever that means to each person i also encourage i invite people to while they're pursuing their business pursue your self development so mm -hmm. don't think you can only do one like we're living in a world where you have choices so you can as you're working on your business work on your self development because they feed each other so the mm -hmm. more skills that i develop i like to call it skillionaire i'm a skillionaire like a millionaire but with skills i have millions of skills <laughs> i love this under my belt that i can use at any moment and these skills allow me more freedom so the more freedom that i have the more that i can attack the avenues the, or better than attack nurture the avenues that i want to utilize so one last thing in this when magna mentioned connection connection to self connection to others it makes me think about this oneness which i feel here in costa rica a lot what is this oneness this concept that i am you you are me the plant the tree the sea the rock the ocean the river the sky the air we are all one and the moment that we start seeing this oneness we eliminate that looking out for self we enter community we start seeing the whole picture we also eliminate racism we also eliminate all these other ills that are also happening we also eliminate polluting the river cuz i am the river when i pollute my waters i am polluting myself when i'm polluting the earth i am polluting myself so once you see this oneness of all the things around us animals plants life and we see that we are part of it we're not separated from it we are nature we are life we are all connected so much easier and again this is part of our growth and evolution and wherever you are at that is fine and you can be there no judgment this no is judgment. one way one philosophy that allows me to live in this abundance of manifestation that i am creating intentionally each and every day nice nice uh, <laughs> namaste one, one more question <laughs> namaste <laughs> so the scenario That's right. do you want to do you want to leave costa rica nah i'm gonna stay right here <laughs> see i was about to ask that man it's like okay the pandemic is over you can go anywhere now what do you want to do what's the plan 
are you saying the pandemic is over? Like your your hypo- uh, hypothetical Hypo- p- pandemic is yeah. over. Like when when it is when it is over. Yeah, when it is over. Yeah. Do you go back to your regular schedule? Uh, Are you going to do things differently? I don't have a regular schedule. Things are always different with me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So definitely there's no regularity to to return to. There's so much has changed already that even the regular is a different regular. Uh, I will probably be taking a trip somewhere to the beach because I really wanted to do that. Um, but I'm not at the stage where I'm intent on moving completely, but I definitely want to go somewhere. I, w- I want to go back to Thailand, actually. I had really? a really nice time there in December and I wished I had stayed longer, but I took like a short trip and I had things to do when I got back. But yeah, that, I'm, I'm probably going to do take a nice little trip for myself. Mm-hmm. You're staying in Costa Rica one. That's a really good question. <clears throat> Here's my authentic thoughts. And with this, I wanted to read a, another definition of something. It's called virtual signaling. And the reason I read these definitions is to help me stay focused. Yeah. And helps me be authentic. So what is virtual signal? So, the action or practice of publicly expressing opinions or sentiments intended to demonstrate one's good character or the moral correctness of one's position on a particular issue. So I want to make sure that the things that I share don't ever come across as that. I don't see myself in that way. Yeah. I see myself working, growing, evolving, learning. So being authentic with that if i am learning i wouldn't stay in costa rica because we have a whole planet earth university so right now the course that i am in is in costa rica and i'm learning a lot in costa rica and there are other courses that i will take in planet earth university i want to have multiple phds in multiple countries and multiple cultures and multiple lessons that I'm gonna learn from different people in different places. Costa Rica is very rich, <clears throat> as well as so many other countries on sure. the planet. I also love what Magna said as, there is no regular schedule, and I subscribe to that, and brings me to the philosophy of, the only thing constant is change. And the, even the concept of when the pandemic is over, I don't see that as, as a thing. Like that's not a destination for me. I see that as a journey. Mm. So the pandemic to me is a journey. And it also takes away my, my fear and anxiety. So I have friends, and again, not virtual signaling, yeah. sharing my way, my philosophy, sharing from my heart. When I was thinking, oh man, I can't wait for this is over that just gave me anxiety and it and it it was living in fear Mm -hmm. yeah when i look at it as this is the path that i'm on and right now i'm in this path i actually want to enjoy this moment because right now the, the moment that i'm living is growth why would i want this growth to be over and again so we have virtual signaling and and before that we had the other word Spiritual bypass, not spiritual bypassing, just feeling my now, my now right now is learning about fruits, self-development, learning how to connect to self more, learning to live in the planet. This journey that I'm in, why would I want that to end? It's actually something I wanted to continue and I want to adopt it and bring it with me to whatever country I go to next to whatever Planet Earth University course I'm on this constant change that I experience, that we all experience as part of life, it's the one thing that we all live, is this evolution, this growth, this transformation that we're living in every day. Once I see it that way, I'm no longer afraid. I'm no longer afraid of, it's kind of like being a kid and you're in the car and you're like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? I remember being that kid. 
about everything, even as an adult. Like, when is this over? Now I'm looking at it as this is my now, this too shall pass, this now is constantly changing. Right. How do I, how can I be grateful in this now? How do I see the abundance in this now? How do I learn from this now so that the next now is even better? The next now is even better. Awesome. All right. You too. Uh, I'd love to continue this conversation some other time with different topics. I'm sure we can talk about it for hours, but I really want to thank you for your time. I think there's a lot of valuable lesson to learn here on philosophies. Um, I will be posting it on my YouTube channel. And Where can guys, we find you, Juan, if people want to know more information? There you go, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we can find him. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, can um, people, um, where peop, how yeah. can people visualize you and find you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm most, most active on my Facebook. And I try to post nature as much as possible. And I also like to post wordplay and post sometimes free flow of thoughts, which can get really like wild and philosophical and fun. And yeah, so Facebook, I would say, would be the easiest way to connect. How about you, Magna? How do we connect with you? <laughs> Well, my name, Magna Gopal, is pretty much my handle for all of my platforms. So you can Brilliant. contact me on my site, magnagopal.com. My YouTube channel has a lot of actually empowered <clears throat> thoughts, uh, mm -hmm. lessons that I have uh, found very easily translate from dance into life because it all intersects. Uh, and Instagram, all of the stuff, Magna Gopal, easy to find. <laughs> all right. Uh lady and gentlemen uh, be safe thank out you Bradley. There. this I was will, nice thank I will, you for coordinating this yeah i will yep. contact Great you call. later hopefully we can get together again uh, at a festival or somewhere but uh, i love you both L thanks for the philosophy lesson here <laughs> <laughs> thank this you was so much fun it was yep. nice to connect I'm so with inspired you. by you too thank you thanks guys <laughs>